Hello, um, my name's Simon. Um, I'm a technical sales specialist here at Blackmagic Design and we're here at NAB 2022. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is just show you some of the new features of Resolve. Now, one of the big new features is my favorite feature as well because it is massively, massively time-saving and that is the ability to object mask in Resolve. So before we had a magic mask that would allow you to almost sort of rotoscope people. So very simply by doing a quick selection, it would allow you to pick an entire person or a face or a leg or an arm. But now what we've done is we've introduced an object mask which will allow you to very quickly identify objects and mask them out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you this. So um, to begin with, what I'm gonna do is in Resolve, I'm just gonna spool through to where um, I'd sort of like to do my selection from. Now, in this case, I need to select the cyclist and the bike because I want that to stand out from the background. So within Resolve now, within, oh, the zoom's not working, <laughs> sorry. Um, so within Resolve now, you have a, an object mask. So what the object mask will allow me to do is simply draw a selection over an object and then if I hit track what it will do is it will go through and it will track forwards and as you can see the red selection shows me what I've got tracked so again it'll take a little while I won't track the whole thing but you'll uh, you'll get the idea so as you can see what the mask is doing it is literally tracking my object so it's not just doing a person, it is doing the actual bike as well. So as you can see, I've got a little blue track line, so it's tracked the cyclist through the shot. And now what I can do is I can, <clears throat> excuse me, I can actually go and grade this. So I can add a serial node and then just pipe the mask into the next node. And then using things like my curves, I can just sort of tweak the contrast of my cyclist and then what I can do simply just separate him from the background I can add an outside node from here and if I just dial the contrast back and make the background look a little more soft and as you can see what the object mask has done is I've not had to do any rotoscoping any tracking on that it's automatically tracked the object and it can do it on big things, small things. You know, people have said, well, what objects can you track? And the truth is you can try it on anything. You know, if you've got big areas like this, where you've got a big area like um, a pitch, for example, you can select it. As you can see, you can select it. Uh, and if I change this to better, you can see you can select really big areas. Um, and it is, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, to give you an example, this is a, a shot that's already been tracked. As you can see, I drew the selection over a man and a horse. Um, again, if I now play this back, you can see that it's tracked both the man and the horse. And then if I want to sort of make a grade to this, so, you know, if I want to do that sort of documentary look whereby you have your image in color, but your object in black and white, I can do that. So again, if I add a serial node and pump that in, uh, and again, what I can then do is simply go and make the shot black and white, and I, I can maybe tweak what the black and white actually looks like. Oopsie, maybe just pull that up a little bit. And again, as you can now see, so it's, it's pull the color out of the shot and it's so quick you don't need to roto any well I said it's for grading you don't need to do roto work it will just pick objects out and that for me is is sort of a massive new feature because it's so time saving some of the other new features that we've done in the color page especially is we've introduced some new resolve effects so the first one of these is something called a depth map uh, what I'll do is let me just reset this so what I can do is, under my effects, we have something called a depth map. Now the depth map, if I apply it to a clip, what it will do is it will decide, using Resolve's AI, it will decide in your shot what is in the foreground and what is in the background. So 
again, users can adjust this further because you can sort of go in and say, I'd like to adjust my map levels. And if I just drop the near limit down a touch, it will keep up with me. There we go. So as you can see, where something is white, it'll sort of get the full effect. Where something is gray, it'll get a little bit of an effect. And where it's black, it won't get any of the effect at all. So again, if I'm just going to turn off my depth map for a second, and it'll go back to the normal image. And now what I can do is simply add a serial node in here. And again, what I need to do is pipe the color information. Oh, sorry, pipe the matte information from node 2 into node 3. And now I can grade this. So again, if I just sort of pump a lot of green into the foreground, as you can see, what it'll do, the trees in the foreground will go really green, the trees sort of slightly behind that go less green, and then obviously the background doesn't take in any of the effect at all. If you've got a shot like this whereby you maybe want to cheat depth of field, you can absolutely do that because again, I could simply add an outside node. And then in my effects, what I could do, I'm just going to turn off my, my gallery for a second and just drag that across. <clears throat> I'm going to simply sort of apply a lens blur in here. And as you can see, it'll sort of add a blur to the background, but not the foreground. Again, the blur is a little bit harsh. I can just dial that back. So this is really cool as well. So again, it's massively time saving. If people don't have enough depth of field in the shot, they can actually um, sort of cheat it using the depth map. And instead, that's a, a, an effect that you can just drag and drop into your node tree and get straight to working with it. Um, another thing we've done as well is the surface track. Again, I'll just reset this. So um, Resolve's always had a really good tracker in. We've always had a really good clown tracker and it's able to track power windows. Um, however, if you think power windows are a very set shape and also surfaces that you may track to, um, they're not sort of flat surfaces like this, they don't want to tend to move. So for example, you know, somebody want to put a color grade on my face, my face bends and flexes and changes. Um, so what we've done is introduced a surface tracker that can kind of keep up with these um, changes to a surface. So again, what I can do is in my effects, if I just go into the surface tracker, I can add this to my shot. And now what I can do is if I go into the bounds, oopsie, if I go into the bounds, what I can do with the bounds, I can just select the area that I'd actually like to surface track. So I'm just going to do it around my subject's eyes. There we go. So again, I've got a, I've got a surface area there that looks quite good. Now if I click on the mesh, it shows me all the points within the bounds that are going to kind of pick up on the movement. Now for this, I don't need it to be as complicated, so I'm just going to drop it down to about 30 points. Uh, and then I've got a track option. So if I then hit track and I hit track forwards, as you can see, it will track the surface and any changes in movement to that surface. Now with the surface tracker, I need to tell, I need to give the surface tracker some information because at the moment you've just done a surface track and it's picked up all the movement. So what I want to do is I need to feed the surface tracker some information. So what I can do in Resolve is simply add a corrector node. Um, and what I want to do is I want to take the signal from my original node, do some work on this node and then pipe the result into the surface tracker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, bring my playhead back to the beginning. And now using my power windows, I'm going to give my model some... Oopsie, let me just undo that then. I'm going to give my model some eyeshadow. There we go. So again, I can... Uh, quickly do this. Again, on the same note, I'm, I'm going to add another power window. So this node in each power window is going to get the same grade. So there we go. And now what I can do, again, there's so many different ways I could do this, but 
using my HDR wheels and the global control I could sort of push eyeliner in there looks a little bit crazy but again if I soften the if I soften the result There we go, I end up having a nice sort of result there. And now when I play that back, it'll it'll track, it'll track apply the power windows to the surface that I've tracked and any changes in movement will just literally be picked up by that. So you can do all sorts with the surface track. You can do things like logo replacements on clothing where the surface bends and stretches and moves. Um, and I'd say there, you know, in the color page, there's some of the real key features. So the object, um, track uh, the object mask is just unbelievable you know it'll stop colorists having to rotoscope the surface tracker is allowing you to do to take resolves tracking to another level to track surfaces um, and then obviously the depth map is great because you know you can sort of separate your image into planes at the at the touch of a button so and there's some of the sort of the key features that we've done in Resolve that I think people will really be interested in and be able to dive down into and test them for themselves.